I'm just gonna warn you to start here. The series is pretty fucked up. If you're sensitive to basically anything that might be in here, so uh, don't say I didn't warn you. The offer. Hi, people. I don't own Harry Potter and make no money with it. I always loved the Harry Potter novels, but writing a long story is a daunting task. After a month, I've been writing one-shots to get a grasp, and now I fnick I have what it takes. This is going to be epic. I have a lot of things planned, and I hope you enjoy. The pair I think is obvious to you, but there are some trouble along the way. Yeah, love is never easy. Expect a lot of twists and revelations about the motivations between the characters. Adventures, mystery, and love all along the way. The first chapter have no snuff, but the other one will be rated M. Enjoy! Chapter 1, and the girl receives the heritage. Hermione received a letter from an unknown person. It reads, Hermione, you are not child of your parents. You are my daughter. Come see me and receive you magical artifacts. Because your parents don't want you near me. Your dear mother, Jonesy, so angel do the horse. No! My parents lied all my life to me. I must find the truth. And Hermione grabbed a bundle of clothes and parted from her house. She didn't talk to her fake parents because they would lie to her. She went to the place where her real mother said she would be. A strange pink house in America. In the Bronx. Hermione knocked the door and a person welcomed. Oh, Hermione, my daughter, hug me. And the strange woman hugged Hermione. The woman was very strange, clothed like an unwashed gypsy. But she was not a gypsy, only unwashed. Why all this now? asked Hermione to the gypsy-clothed woman. Oh dear, come, I tell you everything. They entered the house. The mother did a tea and told everything. You, Hermione, is the descendant of an ancient E species of megawolves. Your father impregnated me with his sperma for Zoa, and he died in a battle of a thousand days against wizards. So you are a mecha wolf too? No, Hermione. Only mecha wolves pass their own genetic code. You have the DNA of your father. I was only a surrogate. I carried you in my womb and lacked in you with my milk. So you are not my mother? Yes, I am, but not of a genetical kind. Now, Hermione, receive the power your father wanted you to have. And Hermione's mother opened a magnificent chest called the Chest of Wolf, full of metallic parts, gears, and fur. As the powerful chest opened, a light crossed the room and entered the body of Hermione's. Ah, it's hurting! Don't be afraid. You are receiving the power of Mecha Wolf. And broom! All went white and fumes. Hermione fell on the ground, breathing fast and confused. Now, my child, you have a new name. You are called by the name your father wanted to you. You shall now be called Foxy Lean Susie Angel Do the Horse. Oh, Mom, I feel weak! Yes, Foxy Lean, you will take a time to accept the new Mega Wolf powers. But do not be unprotected. Receive this weapon your father used to defend himself in battles of war. And Jonesy <laughs> gave a Colt 45 revolver to Foxy Lean. It's a magical revolver. It shoots balls of fiery acid projectiles. You need to recharge every week, or it will get useless for the rest of your life. And the mother gave a battery so Foxy can recharge the gun. 
Oh, Mom, I'm so grateful, but this is a great burden for me to hold. No, Foxy Lean, you are prepared. Just be aware of false friends you encounter in your journey. Remember, the wizards killed your father. Hermione got eyes covered with deeply tears. She looked down, closed her eyes, clenched her hand, and uttered, I will revenge him, mother! I promise! And the two hugged one another. Hermione went away and picked a plane to return to England. She was taking with her the strange chest, because her mother said she will need the contents inside, but she must know open before the right time. After some hours, Foxy Lean arrives at Hogwarts, and her friends are waiting. Harry and Ron hugs her and say, Oh, Hermione, we are so happy you are here. Come on, let's come in and you tell us the news. They walked in the Hogwarts direction, talking. Oh, boys, I changed my name. Now I'm called Foxy Lane. <laughs> Foxy Lane, said Ron. That's a wonderful name. Where you got that? My mother gave me. That makes sense, said Harry Potter. As they entered the castle of Hogwarts, boards were announcing some changes at the school. What's this? said Potter, reading the advice board. Hogwarts is under martial law. Dangers are all around the place and no student can get out of the premises of the school anymore. Visits to Hagrid's place are forbidden. Hagrid? asked Foxy Lane. Is he troubled? Not that I know, says Potter. Let's find out. And they went. Hagrid was reforming his house and some very well-endowed girls were helping him with the construction. Hi, Hagrid, said the trio. Oh, boys, hug me! And they hugged him with a lot of friendship. Why is there martial law under Hogwarts, Hagrid? asked Hermione. Well, don't tell anyone this, boys, but there's some rumor that those wicked mecha wolves are lurking around our school. They are vicious bastards. They will rip apart a wizard with no second chances. Hermione got very frightened. Mecha wolves? What if they attack me not knowing my real blood lineage? She only listened the rest of Hagrid's talk. So I must say, don't get out of the castle, boys. If I need a help from you, I call. Here, take these cell phones, we stay in contact. And Hagrid lent them to the friends. After this, Hagrid picked a homemade cigarette from his pocket, lighted it, and started to smoke. Hagrid? asked Ron, very confused. Do you smoke now? Oh, this? No, it's only to relax. Do you want to smoke a bit? The half-giant offered the cigar to Ron. Yes, it's a cigar now. <laughs> oh, oh, why not? And the red-haired boy picked it and inhaled a big deal of fumes inside his lungs. Cough, cough, cough. Whoa, this is insane. I'm feeling dizzy, dude. And Ron started to look the sky, and he saw mushrooms and pine frees flying and dancing together like copulating hyenas. Foxy Lean and Harry smoked some too, and all of them started to look the sky together and feel the rain of marshmallows covering them with rivers of orange juice and ostrich eggs. Well, Hagrid, this one is awesome. Can you give us some to use after the dinner? Asked Harry, softy and lazy like a dying sea sponge. Oh, fucking no, man. This shit is expensive. Go buy some yourself, dude. And Hagrid went back to the reform in his house with the poorly clothed women. As the trio went to Hogwarts, Harry decided to get rid of his delay and put his hands on Hermione's panties-covered vagina. Here we go. What are you doing, you prick? Asked Hermione, nervous slapping Harry's fool hand. Oh, don't be so selfish, girl. I just want what a man deserves said Potter, very horny, and rubbing a bulge on his crotch. Fuck 
you, you snotting piece of shit. If you want to fuck me, you'll have to ask my permission. And she slapped Harry's face with her powerful hand. Harry fell to the ground. You bitch, you're gonna pay. You are so stupid, Potter. Instead of insulting me, ask for my pussy. Come on, I'll give you now, said Hermione, slapping her vagina with her both hands. Oh, come on, you two, said Ronnie with a lazy and calm voice. Give me a break. I'm having a breeze here, and you, fighting over some shitty, unshaved pussy. You two are so immature. Hermione got angry. Unshaved pussy? What do you know about women, Ron? You never masturbated in your entire life! How do you know, you little whore? Do you watch me going to the bathroom? Yes, I watch. What's the problem? I want to see nude boys, but it seems there's no real man in this school. I'm done with you two guys. I'm here, waiting to be fucked. But you just keep discussing about your manly egos. Fuck you! And Hermione goes away. Ron and Harry give looks to one another. It's all your fault, Harry. I wanted to fuck her first. You are a slowpoke guy. Suck my dick. And the two friends went separate ways. Foxy Lean was very upset, and as she entered Hogwarts Castle, Draco was there. So, who I'm seeing now, Hermione, angry and ready to make a mistake, said Draco, provoking her. But he was not expecting waff she was ready to do. Foxy Lane grabbed Draco's cheeks and gave him a big kiss on the mouth, moistening his lips with her most revengeful desires. Draco was too appalled and did not know what to do. He just stayed there getting kissed by that beautiful lady. After some minutes kissing Draco, Foxy Lane, whom shall be called Foxy from now on, felt a hot and humid liquid on her pants. She looked and oh my god! Draco pissed his pants! Draco, you are a joke! Oh, sorry, I couldn't. It's just, you are so hot and all. And Draco got ashamed. He cried a small tear from his eyes. His tummy got all cold, and nothing in the world could spare him from this worstful moment. Foxy got very sad for him, and trying to lighten him up, she said, Oh, Draco, you are more manly than those bastards that were my friends. Only real men cry when they kiss their women. And Draco cleaned the cry and hugged Hermione. Oh, Foxy, don't never leave me alone. Promise ye me. I promise ye, you, Draco. From a distance, Ron saw the scene happening between Draco and Foxy. He clenched his hands and said, That Foxy, she will see. She will pay for all she did to me. And Ron was furious. First chapter end. Hermione got angry. Unshaved pussy, what do you know about Rimmon? <laughs> what do you know about Rimmon 1?